I used to have a lateral lisp. I think I've said this in some of my videos before. That's one of those lisps that sounds like this. And it's very, very horrible. Every time I used to speak as a kid, kids would laugh at me because I spit. And, and they'd mock this um, lisp. As I worked with a speech pathologist and years later, I've realized and they've told me the lateral lisp is the hardest one to lose. And I remember going through speech pathologist and having to hold my hands on my cheeks so that the air could come through the front. Because I really wanted to put the air out the sides. Eventually, I started figuring it out. Funny thing is, I got mocked and laughed at for having that lisp. You would think that as soon as I started figuring it out, I would be so proud to speak this way. Look, people, I'm speaking properly. That wasn't the case. I was actually in first grade when I started getting my speech pathology. And in second grade, as I was about to make my first communion, I still wasn't using my proper S's. I kept defaulting to the comfortable, I should say familiar way that I had been speaking. My mom is a wise woman. She noticed this. And she eventually said to me, you need to speak properly because if you don't, I'm not letting you make your first communion. Well, I was terrified of that because I was so looking forward to my first communion. And so I had to, hi mom, I wanna speak to you. And any time there wasn't us, I needed to speak properly. So I did. And eventually the self-consciousness was gone. And I don't know when the day occurred that I wasn't even thinking about the fact that I had to work to consciously speak my S's properly. Why am I telling you this? I've been working with a particular individual, a couple, and I see this frequently. The wife is very devout and she's been pushing her husband to go to church. Love God, go to adoration. You need to be closer to God. You need to do this. We need you to lead the family. I've also worked with the husband individually. And one of the things I found, and here's the point of this video, is he said, the more she pushes me, the more I go the other direction. The more she makes it obvious of what I'm doing incorrectly, the more I hold on to my old ways. Now, in this man's example, it might have been pride. And I think for all of us, pride is always part of our sin in some way, right? Because it has us holding on to our comforts. But what I had to say to her is, and haven't you noticed, though, that he has been going to church more often? Oh, yes, yes. He has said some prayers with you, yes. He's done everything except go to confession. So I told her the story of the lisp. And I said, what you don't want to do is make that thing, that flaw, and even the improvements, anything conscious to your spouse. You don't want them to know that you're noticing because it's awkward. It's uncomfortable. And our natural self wants to just like, just leave me alone. <sighs> yeah, okay, whatever. I I'm doing what I want to do. And not because of anything you've done. It sometimes causes defensiveness. It just sometimes causes embarrassment. It's that, just don't notice me. Just don't notice me. Let me just do the thing. And I bring this up because so many of you do the same things to your spouse. I've worked with hundreds of people. Well, I need my spouse to do this. I need them to go to church. I need to tell them this. Tell them that they know. I knew how to get rid of my lisp. I just didn't want to think anybody was noticing. 
because the old way was more comfortable. And being noticed, even though I was going to be noticed for something good, was uncomfortable. Leave your spouse alone. They know what they should be doing and shouldn't be doing. Let your example lead. Lead with joy. Even sometimes, even sometimes compliments are awkward. Because in there too, think about it in terms of this husband, he has to acknowledge that his wife led him. And men don't want their wives to lead. They want to lead. God wired men to lead. This isn't just about going to church. This is about other addictions, other problems, other journeys that people make away from alcohol, away from drugs, away from porn. Even saying, I'm so proud of you. I noticed that you haven't looked at porn in a while. Just kind of makes the person cringe because it's still on the back of us reminding us, yeah, 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 I know I used to do that. Just leave me the heck alone. We want to just walk forward without any thought of our past sins. We don't even want to know that anyone that we know noticed our past sins. We just want to live in today. So don't point out the fact that you notice your child's lisp is going away. Continue to say your prayers. Continue to thank God. Continue to ask God for the grace so this child perseveres amidst change. That they recognize they're doing the right thing. It's the same for your spouse. Same for your other child. Same for any sins, any improvements the person's making that might be uncomfortable. Now I'm not talking about, wow, you've been taking voice lessons and your voice is getting really good. That's a little bit different because not having a singing voice or having an okay singing voice, but becoming greater at singing is different than, wow, you're not drinking alcohol anymore today. Good for you. I hope you understand the difference. If you don't, let me know, ask your questions, post them in the comments. I'll respond to you either through a a reply that's written, or I might even do a follow-up video, depending on what the question is. Just want us to continue to learn how to be, how to build our relationships, how to improve our communication with everyone else. That's my degree, communication. How we say what we say. Sometimes silence is better. Sometimes speaking is better. Sometimes pointing something out is better. Sometimes ignoring it is better. Each decision has to be given to God, but you can do this. He'll be so proud of you for caring enough to do what you think is best for the other person and not just what you feel like doing or you impulsively decide to do. So can't wait to hear from you. I am Dr. Christine Bacon. Thanks for watching another Bacon Bit. And I want to remind you, as always, to live your life sunny side up.